Hello and welcome to the Good Talk back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Raw Reaction series every single day at 8 a.m. Other than yesterday, apologies that there was no show yesterday. I was on my early shift as I sometimes am, 7 till 3. Uh, but I did do a show after my shift finished at uh, 5 p.m. covering the Leeds game in a lot of detail. So if you're wondering why there was no show yesterday and you want to get up to date with all my thoughts on the Leeds game, Go and watch the show that I did uh, yesterday afternoon. It also meant during a show in the evening that a lot of our Western listeners could tune in too. So I don't mind doing these shows. Sometimes a little bit later because it opens up the audience uh, a little bit more and more of you can tune in live. And the amount of people I see dropping into the chat book saying, hey, I don't get to usually watch this live because I'm usually sleeping. So that's really good to see. But good morning to everybody in the chat box. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, yes, it's getting used to uh, the uh, the intro words there. <laughs> Bungle, Chris, Vu, got Jose, we've got uh, Oli, we've got Yassir, we've got Ife, we've got Ebi. We've got Nikolai. Good morning to everybody in the chat box, making sure everyone feels welcome and good and well. Do drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And go and drop a subscription over to the Arsenal Way as well. We did a show yesterday morning for those that weren't around here for the 8 a.m. show because we didn't do one. You can always tune in Monday to Friday at 9.30 a.m. on the Arsenal Way for the morning show I do over there with the guys from Football.London and our fan brands team. So make sure you check that out. Link is in the description if you haven't checked it out. Already, uh, we kick off with the League Cup quarter final draw uh, in regards to who Arsenal could be facing in the competition. Uh, Arsenal again, uh, well, I mean, I say again, there's the opportunity now that we won't face Manchester City. We reached the quarterfinals of the competition last year and we got absolutely trounced by Manchester City at the Emirates with Alex Runison, if you remember, having a pretty awful performance. Um, but in the round of 16, we could face, or rather the quarterfinal after going through from the round of 16, we could face Chelsea, we could face Sunderland, we could face Brentford, Leicester, who also won on penalties, West Ham, who beat Man City on penalties, Liverpool or Spurs. Out of those, I imagine that Sunderland are obviously the, the the best team that we could face. A League One side getting to the quarterfinals of the League Cup is is very impressive. Um, and so we could face Sunderland as probably the, the most favourable side. Next on that list, you probably look towards uh, Brentford, followed by West Ham, Spurs. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I think I'd rather play Spurs than West Ham right now. West Ham are, are very, very good. Uh, Leicester up there as well. Uh, and then Liverpool and Chelsea are the two uh, the two big ones that you'd want to avoid as much as possible. Um, but any of the others other than Chelsea and, and, and Liverpool, I would be uh, OK with and would challenge Arsenal to try and get past them. You'd hope that Chelsea and Liverpool get drawn against one another. That's what we would like to see. Or one of them goes up against Spurs. It's obviously what would be preferable. But the draw will take place on Saturday morning on Soccer AM, which is a, a UK-based uh, TV program of varying levels of controversy and, uh, <laughs> and enjoyability. Uh, so if you want to check in for that, it's on Saturday morning on Soccer AM is where they'll be doing the draw. Um, moving on to the next story and some information released by Statsbomb has rated Arsenal as the second bottom uh, for aggression. Now, this is an interesting bit of uh, stats because Arsenal have very much been under Arteta trying to improve their pressing. Now, based across the whole of the season so far, they actually rate in the second bottom for aggression. Now, aggression is basically measured by the proportion of times that a player on the Arsenal side either pressures, tackles or fouls an opposition player within two seconds of them being passed the ball by a teammate. So, for instance, say, if myself and Drew are on a team, if Drew passes me the ball, if the opposition side were to foul me, um, pressure me or tackle me within two seconds of me re receiving the ball, the opposition would uh, be going up in their aggression metrics. And Arsenal are rated as the second bottom side in the lead for league for aggression, which is something that I know Arteta will certainly want to uh, change and certainly improve. But it doesn't always mean that the most aggressive side are the most successful because Leeds United sit top of the table for aggression. But clubs like Liverpool, clubs like Leicester City are still much higher up the table. Manchester City, though, you see kind of in the middle, as are Chelsea and Spurs. So teams that are at the top and at the bottom of the table doesn't necessarily correlate to where you are in the league based upon your 
aggression rating. But it is something that I know that Arteta will want to change and improve in the side. Now, Arsenal are supposedly competing with Sergi Roberto from Barcelona uh, and are looking to try and sign the Spanish international. Nearing his 30th birthday now, uh, he's a very versatile player, can play right back, central midfield, can play right wing back, can play right midfield. Um, came through La Masia as, as more of a central midfielder then, but then moved to right back as Barcelona failed to have really any players that could cover in that position. And Arsenal are said to be uh, one of the sides interested. This is very much looked at as a depth player for Arsenal. If you think about it, Arsenal are going to be wanting to bring in someone that can support Tommy Asu because the drop down from, say, Tommy Asu to Cedric or to Chambers is quite significant. Is Sergio Roberto of the level that closes that gap? Maybe slightly, but again, I'm not sure that it would be a smart move for the club to do. But bringing in experienced players, I know, is something the club will want to move towards, having brought in six players at the years of 23 and under. But uh, but, uh, Sergio Roberto, for me, probably leans towards the no. I would look at other players in that position to bring in as a backup option for Tommy Asu. I'd definitely move on Cedric. I'd definitely think about considering selling Chambers as well, but that would mean Arsenal would need to move for a right back. We have one coming back in Hector Bellerin, but I imagine he'll want to leave on a permanent deal with just one year remaining on his contract in the summer. Uh, updates on how he's getting on at Real Betis coming very soon. Now, Lucas Torreira has forced his way into the Fiorentina team, and there are rumours that with this news, it could prompt Fiorentina to act at the end of the season if he maintains his first team place in the side. Fiorentina have an option to buy Lucas Torreira for around €12 million Euros at the end of the campaign. And if they choose to do that, Arsenal would get a bit of a windfall, a nice £9 million bonus. It's, about the, it's a similar figure to what we'll be getting from Olympic Marseille uh, for Gendouzi at the end of the season. So those two leaving could earn Arsenal around £20 million if they were both to move on at the end of the campaign with their clauses in their contracts being activated. Now, Gendouzi's is an obligation to buy on Marseille's part, whereas Torreira's is an option to buy. But with him going at such a low figure, it could be tempting for the Serie A club to bring him in. And with uh, Dusan Vlahovic at Fiorentina, obviously looking like he could be sold in the summer, Fiorentina may be in a bit of money come the end of the season and so therefore would be more than capable of activating that option in Lucas Torreira's contract. Now we move on to our penultimate story of the day and uh, Christian Falk, uh, head of football at Bild, has said that Arsenal are definitely interested in signing Denis Zakaria from Borussia Mönchengladbach. The Swiss international midfielder has so far been kept out of the international side by, when fit, Granit Xhaka, which has led myself and a fair few other people to comment and say, do we really want to bring in a player that is being kept out of the Swiss national side by Granit Xhaka? I'm not so sure. Is he the type of defensive midfielder that we want to go for? Again, not so sure. We have done a tactical breakdown on Dennis Zakaria on the channel. If you wanted to go and check that out, uh, I was joined by football scout and Swiss football scout at that, Oliver Zeziga, who gave us a lot of information. He's a very, he's a very big fan, as you would imagine, of Dennis Zakaria. Um, but I'm not so sure if he's the right profile of player. He did suffer with a serious knee injury last season as well, which is something to always think about for how he might be and how he might fare in the long term. I think there are better options out there than Zachariah, um, but that's not to discredit his quality. I just have a lot of questions whether or not he's a significant enough upgrade on what we currently have in the midfield to go for an investment. Although he would be free is what I'm um assured that his contract is running out at the end of the season if you are say at arsenal moving on el nenny maitland niles uh if players like that are moving on and we need to bring in multiple midfielders in the summer bringing in zacharia on a free is a pretty good move for arsenal to do as long as they go and invest further in another midfielder as well you can never have enough uh quality midfielders that's for sure and now we move on to the final story which is around Stan Kroenke. Now, to to lay this out very flatly, I'm not an expert in NFL. I'm not an expert in what's going on uh, with that side of things. Um, (laughs) I am going to read from uh, Bleacher Report's more condensed uh, kind of overview of the report that was published initially by ESPN. But to read you through this, uh, LA Rams owner Stan Kroenke is challenging an indemnification 
agreement about who would foot the bill for an ongoing lawsuit tied to the franchise's relocation, according to ESPN's Seth Wickers, uh, Wickersham. In 2017, the city of Louis St. Louis Council in Missouri and the St. Louis Regional Convention and Sports Complex Authority filed a suit against the Rams, alleging that the team and the NFL didn't properly honour its obligations ahead of the Rams' move to L.A., and Wickersham reported that Kroenke promised to cover tens of millions of dollars in legal expenses for other NFL teams, but is attempting to walk back on that decision. Regardless of the lawsuit's outcome, it could lay bare the NFL's hidden machinations, and the Missouri Supreme Court ruled in 2019 that league officials and team owners would have to turn over cell phone records dating back eight years as part of the suit. And in September, the court denied an appeal by the defendants requiring them to continue disclosing detailed financial information. Um, now, interestingly, this, has, as I understand it, when Stan Kroenke moved the St. Louis Rams to LA and they became the LA Rams, it was basically expected that he would cover the legal fees surrounding this this move or oh, sorry st louis i should say st louis this is my classic uh, <laughs> english to understand a way of saying something so when he moved the st louis rams to uh la he was meant to kind of you know foot the bill of all of the the legal fees associated with that and the league owners supported that because he was going to cover the all of the fees associated with those side of things but he is reportedly, according to ESPN and, and the people that are covering it, it it's he's not um, doing that. <laughs> and uh, he's apparently, he's challenging that indemnification agreement about who would foot that bill. Um, and if it was to, say, be successful, it could see... Uh, why, why are you asking me about that now? Um, it's, for me anyway, certainly... I don't know how much of a concern it is for Arsenal. Obviously, we know that we're not particularly happy with Stan Kroenke as the owner of Arsenal Football Club. Is it surprising? Who knows? Probably not. I'm not an expert in this field. So I will want to get kind of an expert in the field to speak to about this, to kind of find out more about what's going on around this and how it would affect Arsenal. I imagine it's not going to affect us in any way. Um, that's kind of my initial reaction is that the franchise in America is very, very... Uh, separate to Arsenal, despite him owning both of those franchises, consort um, companies, if you want to call it, because Arsenal basically is a business. Let's be real. Um, but trying to avoid paying what was agreed to be paid, if it's, yeah, um, <laughs> it is, it is, it is what it is. But I don't know enough really to to sit here and say that Arsenal are going to drastically be affected by this because we just we just don't know. Um, but I don't think it's I don't think it affects Arsenal in any way. We know that Arsenal have not received investment from our owners during their during the period of time. They've offered to like refinance loans and to to kind of sort the the impact of the pandemic. And we know that they're well, Josh Kroenke tells us they're going to be covering the the costs and the legal costs associated with their involvement in the Super League. But we've not seen any significant investment from them directly. And all the investments, say, in our most expensive transfer window in the summer um, was done by the club. And all of the club's money was used to pay for Ramsdale and Tomiyasu, etc. So I, whether or not the money that he then has to pay um, comes from Arsenal, that's the only way that I would see it being affected, is whether or not he will use Arsenal's money to... Uh, help him pay off if he is told that he has to pay all of that money off. But I don't know whether or not that's true or whether that can happen. That's all allegedly. That's just theory. So who knows whether or not he could use Arsenal's money to help pay off um, what he's owed in these legal fees that associated with the relocation of the St. Louis Rams. So we will see what happens. Um, but I need to speak to more people that are very much more in the know about this. Um so I've only read you the report and what it is. I would go and read, if I were you, the ESPN report or an associative report about it to try and educate yourselves more. But it's, you know, <laughs> it's almost impossible for me to understand how this affects Arsenal. Um, so there you go. 
Um, the last thing as well, uh, in terms of an article that I've written for Football. London, is around the confusion uh, of the African Cup of Nations and whether or not this is taking place. Um, the federation associated with the competition has raised concerns about Cameroon's ability to host the competition, that there are urgent needs to bring about uh, improvements to their sanitation and how they're dealing with the pandemic. Uh, if this was not to happen, it would take a lot before the competition is still cancelled. Uh, there's rumours that South Africa could be a secondary location where they could choose to move the competition. Of course, it has the infrastructure after the World Cup that it held all the way back in, I believe it was, what, 2010? So that's all there. If they needed to move it, they could do. I doubt that the competition will be cancelled. But um, it's, you know, it's never something that you can completely rule out. Let's, uh, let's go to the second part of the show and uh, let's move on to finding out about uh, your thoughts, your theories, your questions, your queries in the chat box. And uh, yeah, and being interested in what you guys have got to say. So if you do have a question about anything regarding Arsenal, then uh, we'll go through as many of them in the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. So get them in as soon as possible. Let's go to John. Um, John says, I'm pretty sure Conkey will send St. Louis, Kalasanach, Cedric and Ketia and call it even. <laughs> John, always bringing us a little bit of humour to lighten the mood in the mornings, which we appreciate. Um, Ludwig says, an unbiased opinion. I want the African Cup of Nations in South Africa. That's Ludwig reporting from South Africa. Uh, Game Boy says, uh, how big a financial impact will this have on the Cronkies? And do you think that he would be tempted to sell Arsenal? Game Boy, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I am not in the know enough about whether or not that would affect Arsenal in any way. And uh, I, I doubt it. <laughs> I, I very much doubt it. Uh, I don't think it affects any way in which he would sell uh, Arsenal. But um, we'll wait and see what comes out from this. I assume it's going to be more. I'm going to do a lot of research into this today and try and find out a lot more information. So we'll see how it goes. Maggie says, do you think you'd be enjoying the football more if Wenger was in charge of the team? Uh, he has a, I mean, Wenger always had a style of play that you could never kind of say that he didn't. So maybe I would be enjoying it more, whether or not we'd be more successful. Who knows? Uh, it's impossible to say, Matt. Uh, Magambo says, what are your thoughts on Barca sacking Ronald Koeman? I think that it took them too long to do it and they've waited for a, an incredibly long time to sack Ronald Koeman. But they need to get the next appointment right. Whoever they bring in next has to be the right appointment. Um, and if they don't, they could find themselves, again, slipping further away from competing at the top. They're already a massive financial um, problems and they need someone that's going to guide them. Whether that is Xavi, whether Xavi is going to come in and be that guy, it's a big, big risk. You're bringing in someone that's very inexperienced at the European managerial level that's been managing, managing out in Qatar, I believe. So I'm not sure if he's the right choice. He's always been thought of as the kind of the heir to Pep Guardiola and whether or not he would be as successful, but things are very different at Barcelona now as they were under Pep Guardiola and uh, <laughs> whether or not they can sort something with Xavi and whether he would be successful, we'll have to wait and see. But my thoughts on Kuman are that it took long enough for them to sack. Let's uh, go to King, who says, Tom, how would you install Saliba in the squad uh, come next season if I was manager? Uh, I would have him on the bench, probably initially. Ben White and Gabriel are continuing with this partnership. Then you gradually uh, start to integrate Saliba Cup games initially, then you could rotate him out for some. If you've got, say, back to back league fixtures in the midweek, you could swap Gabriel out with Saliba, who can play on the left. You can swap Ben White with Saliba, and you gradually integrate him. You gradually give him opportunities. You see how he fares. And then maybe you could choose to go to a back three. Saliba works very well in the back three. He's doing it right now for Marseille. But if Saliba was to come back, it doesn't necessarily mean that you immediately swap out Ben White, you immediately swap out Gabriel, because they're both having a fantastic time this season. But I do want to see Saliba back. I do want to see him gradually integrated into the team as much as possible. And having three centre-backs as that level of quality is not a problem. You look at Liverpool and how they've got Matip, they've got Joe Gomez, they've got Canate, they've got Van Dijk, and they make it work. So he doesn't have to play every single game, but we do have to give him opportunities. And that's very important. Let's go to Mayo, who says, prediction about who would we play in the next round? I mean, I... A prediction prediction's useless for predicting who we'd have in the next round, Mayo, because it's completely random, or at least we hope it is. So uh 
I imagine my prediction will be we'll end up getting Chelsea just because it's us. Um, but I want Sunderland, is obviously who we would go for right now. Uh, Yama says, and Ketia Balogun going on loan in January. That would leave us pretty thin in the striker department if both of them left, especially with the Bamiang off at the African Cup of Nations. So maybe just one of those, and you probably lean towards Nketiah uh, being sold. Whether well, Balogun does need a loan, so I'd be open to it, but it's a really tricky kind of balancing act whilst African Cup of Nations is on. And Lacazette's also got six months left on his deal, and there's sure to be clubs interested in taking him in January. So we'll wait and see on that. But it's tricky for me to say, should either of them or both of them go on loan? Because it could leave us very, very thin on the ground. Um, let's go to Ife. It says, Tom, do you think that Martinelli should be sent on loan to a Premier League team in January to get more consistency from him? Um, I think that Martinelli's, lo like the possibility of him going on loan is very low. Do I think he should go on loan? I think that a loan would be very beneficial for him because he's not getting too many regular minutes at Arsenal. He needs regular game time to develop at a really important age. But I'm not sure whether that's going to happen or not. I'm not sure that's uh, a likely thing that we will see take place um what no can you stop saying stupid things like that thank you uh john says knowing everything you know about arteta do you think whatever happened between him and saliba that arteta can move on and start afresh with him i feel like something bad and an argument happened look from my understanding john there were issues behind the scenes after the whole french cup final that sans etienne were involved in that saliba wasn't particularly happy and Arsenal didn't react all that well to how Saliba reacted to it. But Arsenal then did kind of mess around with Saliba uh, at the end of that transfer window, didn't get him a loan deal away from the club, even though that was the most beneficial thing to do. He wasn't happy about playing with the under-23s. And you can imagine, why would he be happy? He's, he's a top five league quality defender and he's playing for a youth team. Like It's it's not good. It's not a good environment for him. He got sent off in, in a game. He could have been sent off against Gillingham, I think it was as well. And he was clearly frustrated because he's a lot better than that level and should be playing way above that level. Um, so I'm not surprised how he reacted. But do I think that Arteta can forgive him? Not forgive him. Can I, do I think Arteta can bring him in? I hope so. And the feeling that we get from the club is that his future is still very much at Arsenal. So, yeah, I feel like he can be reintegrated into the team. I don't think that the story for Saliba is over at Arsenal. I think a lot of us... And the club want to see him play. He, they invested a lot of money in him. They would not want to just lose him on a free or lose him for a cut price deal. So we'll see what happens. Um, Stephen says, do you think we still need to buy in January, even if the African Cup of Nations is cancelled? I feel like we need a central midfielder. That's the primary area I think we need to invest in. Um, we were very light when Granit Xhaka got injured and the quality of players below Lukonga and Partey is, is not to the standard. So I would sell El Nenny, I would sell Maitland-Niles and I would bring in a central midfielder this summer and I'd promote maybe some of the youngsters if we need to in the latter stages of the league but I would definitely still be bringing in a central midfielder this summer uh Vinny says do you think fans just need to be patient with injuries or going to kick in over Christmas and January with fixture congestion players will still get chances players are going to get chances but I do feel like in the second half of the season that Martinelli without European football is still going to need an opportunity to go out on loan um, but it's difficult because I don't know how thin that will be left in those areas I don't know what players will sign if any in the January window as well uh, Nikolai says I feel Tommy is great in a back four if Saliba comes and we switch to a back three a back five sorry Tommy might make us a bit slow and too big what do you think I don't think Tommy is slow at all um, I don't think Tom Yasu is a slow player. So I don't think he would slow us down. If we did swap to a back three with Saliba in there, with Gabriel, with Tom Yasu, with Tierney, with White, whoever, um, it's something I think can work, but it would cause us to switch formation again. And I'm not sure that Arteta wants to switch formation all that much. I think it'll be a case of him rotating with Ben White and Gabriel because he can play on either side of the pitch. Uh, Christian says, hi, do you feel Pepe has had enough chances to show his worth? My opinion on Pepe is, is that I think that we should look to upgrade upon him and that if Saka is is and should be getting in ahead of him, then that's a lot of an indication to say that we should probably move on from Pepe at this point. Uh, Harish says, do you think Saliba will be offered uh, to clubs like... But I don't think he'll be offered anywhere. Um, I think the big clubs will be interested in him because he's that good, Arish. So I don't think he'll need to be offered anywhere. I think there will be plenty of clubs interested 
in Saliba in the upcoming windows. May I says contract details on El Neni? Is anyone interested him in him? We were we are basically the only thing we're aware of is that Galatasaray are said to have reached an agreement with El Neni on a personal term level, but the Arsenal Galatasaray agreement is it is nothing. I've heard nothing. I've been seen nothing about that. Um, but I'd be surprised if he didn't leave in Jan. Uh, is what I would be. I would be very surprised if El Neni isn't uh, sold or something. It doesn't happen with his contract in January. I expect him to to leave. To be honest. Um, Pepe to Newcastle, 50 million and run, <laughs> says he fair. Uh, Vishal says, any credibility in the Sergio Roberto rumours? Would you go for him? I wouldn't. Regarding credibility, I don't know. I've heard nothing. Um, so I've talked about it, said Arsenal are supposedly interested according to those reports, but I've heard nothing and I probably wouldn't go for him, to be honest, is where I'm at. Um, hate to say it, but selling Pepe seems like a good idea, says Nikolai. I'll tell you what. I've received a bit of criticism in our comment sections for saying I've been harsh on Pepe. I don't know what I don't know what's harsh about me saying that I would sell him. I don't know why that's harsh. And me saying I would sell him and have an upgrade. I don't know how it's harsh to say that I would upgrade on anyone in the team, to be honest. I think that's more of an agenda-driven side to try and defend Pepe. Um look, if you want to defend Pepe, fair play. But you know, come up with we with an argument rather than saying I'm harsh. Come at me by saying X, Y, and Z, why he should stay, and not that I'm being harsh. I don't think I'm being harsh, saying that if we should look to upgrade on Pepe whatsoever, but it is what it is. It's just, it's not personal. I just think we should upgrade on him. That's just where I'm at. I don't think that he's done enough during the time that he's been here to, um, to establish himself at a club like Arsenal. I don't think he fits our system. I think he suits our counter-attacking style in a league with a lot more space. I don't think he's suited to the Premier League, so... That's just where I'm at. Um, let's go to... Uh, John says, that's not harsh. That's realistic. It's nothing personal. Exactly. Uh, Kev says, Liverpool will probably play a reserve team, so it might not be a bad draw. Possibly so, but I think they would de definitely improve their side if they were playing us. Um, they might still rotate a lot, but I still think they would play some pretty strong players. Um, and that, I think, is probably where we're going to finish things off. Um, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Really appreciate your time, as always. Do drop a like on the video. Do join me at 9.30 a.m. over on the Arsenal way as well. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you, as it always is. And uh, as always, of the Arsenal.